For me, faith wasn't always important. But eventually God caught up with me. He caught up with me in Lourdes and led me to a deeper relationship with him. He led me to the youth group, he led me to the vocations director, and ultimately he led me to priesthood. Hello, my name is Father David Vard. I'm a priest here in the Diocese of Kildare and Lachlan in Ireland, and I work in the parish of Port Leash, County Leash. And I'm a priest for the last 20 or so months, and it's been a great experience. I grew up in a family of five, my mother, my father, and my two sisters, and I was born in the middle. And Lord, for me, was a very distant place, a place I'd never heard much about, a place I knew was a holy place, a place of pilgrimage and very significant in the life of many people. But I thought it was more for old people. When my school asked me to go to Lourdes as a helper for my parish, I was quite surprised and I didn't really want to go. But my mother pers persuaded me to go and I travelled to Lourdes when I was 16. And in Lourdes, I encountered a community that was very much alive, a community that was thriving with the faith, a community that loved me even though they didn't know me, a community that loved each other, they loved the sick, they loved the young, they wanted to be there. And I quickly realised they wanted to be there because of Jesus Christ. In Lourdes, I had a lovely conversation with my parish priest at the time, Father Joe. And I got to ask him questions that any 16-year-old would, lo would love to ask a priest. How, how old were you when you went to seminary? What was it like? Were you lonely? Did you ever want to get married? Had, had you ever had a girlfriend? All these questions that I was dying maybe to know the answer to. And I quickly discovered that this man was not, not, nothing exceptional. He was a great holy man, but he was a man who just really wanted to follow God's call in his life. And that attracted me. And this stupid question came into my mind, the stupid thought, David, maybe you could be a priest. And that began a, a, a series of discernment, began a time of, of wondering and pondering and in my heart and in my mind, could I be a priest? Returning from Lourdes, I wanted again to continue that feeling of love. I can remember a time when anywhere I looked in every TV show I watched and every book that I read and every film that I saw, there was always a priest. I wanted that. I wanted that sense of contentment, that sense of love, that sense of belonging that these priests had. And thankfully, God kept me in seminary and I was ordained a priest on the 25th of June 2017, a priest in my home parish of Port Leash. It was a day filled with much love, surrounded by family and friends, and for many across the diocese and indeed my parish. It was a day I'll never forget, a day that's filled with many graces for me and my family. It was a day that began all those years ago in Lourdes, a day that began all those years ago with that conversation with that parish priest, and a day that I will be forever thankful for. That journey of seven years, that journey of even longer than seven years, has been a journey of such growth a journey when my relationship with Jesus Christ really began and developed. It has been my vocation. It has been the greatest joy of my life to be his priest. But within that call, I believe God gives us many smaller calls. For me, I work in a parish and that's my call to be a Dawson priest, but also to work with young people. In a very special way, I began working with Radio Maria here in Ireland, spreading the good news of God's call to all of us. Those times in which I might find difficult, I know God is always there. The God has always had given me strength. Maybe I just need to be more in tune with his love, to be in tune with his strength, to be in tune with his Holy Spirit guiding and directing me. Hello, my name is Maura Murphy. And we're here in beautiful St. Peter and Paul's Church in Port Leash, County Leash, in the wonderful Diocese of Kildare and Lachlan in Ireland. And I'm here to meet one Ireland's youngest priest, Father David Fard.
So Fadi David, did you ever think when you were a young boy, a teenager, that here we would be uh, in your parish as curate two years on from your ordination day? Never in a million years. Absolutely not. It was the furthest thing from my, I might even say imagination, because it just wasn't in my... Mm -hmm. It wasn't even an option. It wasn't even, no, exactly. It wasn't even an option. Priesthood never entered my mind. For me, priests were old men who would come into the school. I, I don't even think I associated them with actual people. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it was never going to be But an God option. has a sense of humour, God clearly. does, like, tell God your plans and he laughs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I have different plans for you. Yes. Looking back, I can see where God's hand was. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never thought for an, an instant. No. What were your dreams as a young boy? So I played rugby mm -hmm. during the winter and I loved tennis then during the summer. So if you asked me in December, I was playing for Munster or for Ireland in my head. You know, mm -hmm. that was going to be my scoring. What age would you have been? Uh, 15, 16, okay. 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have been scoring tries in front mm -hmm. of the Aviva or the Lansdowne Road, as it's called. And then during the summer, I was, I was definitely playing, you know, Grand Slams and Wimbledon and of course, of US course. Open. And I was winning and I was the youngest person to ever win, you know. <laughs> Um, well, that thread does carry through, does. in fairness, in fairness. <laughs> I was like, okay, I will take that bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we replaced it with a collar and not a Grand mm -hmm. Slam trophy. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so like, obviously, as a young kid, you want to be, you know, famous and mm -hmm. well-known. So I loved the thought of being, a, like, I was never, ever that good. <laughs> I was never that good of a rugby player, but, you know. You were aiming high. Oh, I'm aiming high. And rugby is so big in my family. Uh -huh. and my mother's family especially. Uh, they live and breed mm -hmm. rugby. Like I set up my first mass that, um, you know, uh, Irish by birth, monster by the grace of God. <laughs> and that's why our blood is red, you know? Okay. Um, it's, it's so passionate in my family. Okay, okay. Um, like there even, if, if, if a match had clashed with my ordination, they would have had second thoughts about coming to my ordination. It was going to be, well, that didn't happen, No, because did it was it? summer no. as well, okay, so thank, thank God. God. Thank God. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, it was touch and go. <laughs> okay, well, God's in the detail. Exactly. Okay, Father David, could you tell us a little bit about your home environment and especially the role of your mum? Yeah, um, so my mum my mom played a big influence, uh, faith-wise and outside of faith. Mm -hmm. She was uh, she's a powerful influence in my life. Mm -hmm. And I have two sisters, mm -hmm. and one younger, one, one older. So I was born in the middle. I'm the only son. So uh, Not at all spoiled, I'm Not sure. at all no. spoiled. No. Um, but no, like, my mother was it's a powerful woman. Um, like Faith wasn't huge for me growing up at all. Like I said, priesthood was far from my mind. We moved around quite a bit when I was younger as well. So parish life was not a thing either because our parishes would change. Mm -hmm. um, but she was always there encouraging us either to go to mass or for our first of the communions and confirmations. Mm -hmm. um, she was always our rock mm -hmm. um, for the three of us. Mm -hmm. um, so I owe, I owe a lot to her for bringing me up. And even when it came to deciding to go to seminary, She's always there saying, you know, if it's not for you, come home. There's always a home here. Um, when I can't go home now on a Sunday after Mass, she's a little upset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So she's always there for me. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But she's, she was a very important figure growing up for me. Yeah. So what happened, Father David, to this young boy at 14, 15, 16, whose ambition was Munster, aiming high rugby? How did one go from there to... Now, so many years on, you're Ireland's youngest priest, mm. nearly two years on from your ordination here in the parish of Port Leash. What happened? How did God call you to this? Well, this God location? happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, um, I did transition year in school, mm -hmm. which is that year where you're asked to, to take time out for more formal studies and, mm -hmm. to, and to go about doing more um, creative things or... Like rugby. Like rugby. Um, I had a very bad back injury, so that okay. was gone. Um, but like uh, during transition year, I would have set up a mini company. Okay. We taught the basics of guitar, bass and drums via online video. I love it. Uh, soundofsuccess.com, um, which actually was very successful. And we did, we recorded movies every week, which was again, a very creative and something I really love. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still edit and record some videos, nothing as big as Shalom, <laughs> but I still record. Um, and then involved jumping out of a plane. Right. Raising money. Right. Because um, I, I made this promise to myself to always say yes. Okay. During mm -hmm. that year. I remember my first week in transition year, it wasn't going all that well for me. I was a very shy man outside of a rugby pitch. Um, and I can remember I was in drama class, which was 
so alien to me. Okay. Um, you were really out here. I was zone. really, and we had to act out animals, and I had okay. to act out a polar bear. Oh my god. So, how do you act out a polar bear? So, I was like, Arr. <laughs> and I remember the year ahead came to me and said, David, you have to put more effort into this. So, I did. So, a- anything that came my way, I said yes. Okay. Uh, and that. <laughs> that was God saying, ha, have you now? Yeah. Because it involved, I remember I was in art class. Again, nothing I would do, I, not an artist, but mm-hmm. things you do in transition year. The principal came and wanted to speak to me and asked me would I go to Lord with my parish. Mm-hmm. But the parish priest had rang. He needed two lads from the school to come and push wheelchairs and mm-hmm. just be there in case anyone needed anything, carrying bags, whatever it was, you know, in Lords, mm-hmm. you're there to help. Mm-hmm. So that really challenged my idea of, um, of saying yes to everything. Okay. So Now, when you got that invitation from the principal yeah. to consider this, yeah. did you automatically relate Lourdes with faith? Or no. was it about just helping older people and sick people? Um, I didn't really know what Lourdes was. Okay. I, it was I'd heard of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the principal may have briefed me a little bit because mm-hmm. he could see my uh, vacant expression okay. when he mentioned it. Uh-huh. Um, and the fact that the parish priest had asked, mm-hmm. and the, the principal had told me the parish priest was on the phone and wanted to know. And the principal knew I, I, I'd done nothing in that year to indicate I was religious whatsoever, right. but I was reliable because I said yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I suppose that's why he asked me. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was nothing about faith. Okay. I said no. Right. And then I went home. And Do you remember like, that promise? I did, exactly. <laughs> and, my, and my mother said to me, because again, she was always that supportive. Okay, and encourager. I can, exactly. Uh-huh. And she goes, David, you're going, you know. <laughs> so in my head, I was like, okay, Lords. I went, I don't even think we had internet at home at the time. Okay. I'm not too sure. And what time of year did you go to Lourdes? Was we it went the to summer Lourdes. Was it was summer. It was in June. Okay, okay so maybe, on your maybe free time, July. not even yeah, no, no. in school. Yeah. Exactly. So in my head, I was like, okay, it's south of France. Okay, I'll yeah. tell everyone I'm going to south of France for five days. Okay. Happy out. Um, Reputation still in Exactly, back. you know. I build up kind of a... No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> um, so that, that's why I justified. And I went... And, and what happened for you in Lourdes, Father David? It was an eye-opening experience oh, yeah. from day one. It was like, this is what I've been missing. Because I, I made my first Holy Communion, I made my confirmation, mm-hmm. but I had no experience mm-hmm. of God mm-hmm. or the church. You were probably 15 or 16 at the time. 16. Okay. I just turned mm-hmm. 16. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, it's a very pivotal moment, I think, for any teenager, mm-hmm. you know, 15, 16, going into into your leaving search. Yeah. A lot of decisions have to be made. A lot of decisions have to be made. And then all of a sudden God is like, huh, I'm another decision you have to make. Mm -hmm. But seeing an alive church in Lourdes, Mm. if anyone's ever been to Lourdes, and and I don't mean to to be a Debbie Downer on it, but like growing up, it was scandal after scandal. Mm -hmm. And Lourdes was just so full of people filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But I saw something in them that was very attractive. Did you want that? I wanted that. I want. They had a happiness and a peace. What happened after you came home from Lourdes, Father David? Yeah. So the, the parish priest, Father Joe, he said to the young people who were there. So there was two from my school, mm-hmm. and there was a young nurse there, and the, another young lady was there. Mm-hmm. And he challenged us to go and get two friends each. Okay. And to come meet him. Right. In his house. And at the same time we were in Lourdes, it was also World Youth Day in Australia. Mm-hmm. So he put the same challenge to some of them right. who went to World Youth in uh-huh. Australia. And we gathered, I'd say it's probably August by the time we, everyone got together. Of we gathered. I think I got one friend to come okay, with me. Well done. Well yeah. done. Um, mm-hmm. And we went and we continued the conversation that we're having in Lourdes. And like, he's like, ask me any question you want. Right. So like at 16, like, do you ever go, like, questions like, do you ever want to get married? Do you ever have a girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Are you weird? Mm-hmm. Um, like those are the questions we're What's asking. What's it like to be a priest? What's it like yeah. to be a priest? What do you do every day? Yeah. How much money do you make? Yeah. Uh, those questions. All questions that are relevant to yeah. a 16-year-old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so we, we met then every Thursday. And then all of a sudden there was like a youth group. And th- I brought friends and then they started bringing friends. Oh my goodness. And mm-hmm. I can remember then we were asked to speak at, at Mass. Mm-hmm. And at that stage I started going back to Mass. Mm-hmm. Maybe not every Sunday, mm-hmm. but it definitely became something more in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so there I was up speaking at Mass in my parish church, telling them about my experience in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And other people were telling about their experience in World Youth Day. Mm-hmm. And then we had an, a meeting the following week on the Thursday. And there was like 50 people crammed into his dining room. Like, all okay, from that invitation from all Father from that, Joe. from Father Joe. Go get two friends each, mm-hmm. which is a very biblical, I think, mm-hmm. invitation. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now I know that. Mm -hmm. Back then I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but like 50 young people crammed into that room wanting to explore faith mm -hmm. and wanting some were there because their parents told them, mm -hmm. some were there because they were at the mass themselves and for the first time maybe in a while that their interest was, was sparked. Mm -hmm. And we began a youth group and we met every Thursday, again, questioning, mm -hmm. um, praying. Mm -hmm. We had youth masses, mm -hmm. um, exam masses, mm -hmm. and, and I was involved in that for two years, okay. which was very formative, okay. very formative. Okay. What was it about those two years at the youth group, you think, Father David, that allowed you then to make that step towards, actually, is this what God wants for my life? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I suppose in the youth group, I was seen as almost a leader okay. because I was one of the original. Um, mm -hmm. And that yes that you gave really, oh, the Lord God. was stretching it. God, he really was. <laughs> um, his funny sense of humour. But being in that kind of, I don't know, leading and journeying with other mm -hmm. young people mm -hmm. and saying, I really, I really enjoy this and I feel something. And I, it became like leaving certain nearly gone bye bye at that stage and mm -hmm. studying it was all about the youth group and wow. again also at the time then Father Joe had kind of taken a step back and mm -hmm. the curates came forward because okay. I'm from Newbridge which is a big parish so we have a mm -hmm. number of curates mm -hmm. so Father Pat and Father Rory mm -hmm. and then Father Rory was the vocations director of as the good Lord would allow us exactly. to ordain it yes uh, he's the vocations director of the diocese okay. building up a friendship with the two of them seeing their work mm -hmm and their life, mm -hmm. which was very attractive to me. Mm -hmm. um, a year before would have been, like I said, the opposite of what yeah. I was thinking. But just seeing that these are men, these are good men who want to give their life up to God. Mm -hmm. And then a, a seed was being planted from probably Lord, mm -hmm. saying maybe I could be a priest. Mm -hmm. So, Father David, let's fast forward another couple of years okay. and let's rewind at the same time to a year and a half, nearly two years ago, to June 2017 and your day of ordination. Yeah. Tell us all about it. Looking back now, it's a whirlwind mm -hmm. of emotions, of time, because like, there's something, in one way you've been waiting for for seven years mm -hmm. and w another way like you don't want to happen. Because mm -hmm. um, it marks an end mm -hmm. and also a beginning. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I, June was filled of ordin full of ordinations. Every weekend, okay. classmates were being ordained. So you're going to them. You've no real time at home. And the next uh, second, it's, it's your order. But then like, the ceremony was, it was just spectacular. I remember coming into the church. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a beautiful day, mm -hmm. weather-wise. And coming into the church and seeing a full church. And like, why, why are they all here? For you? Uh, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't, I don't think it was for me. It was, it was for the priesthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a real sense of, yes. Mm -hmm. We need priests. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating priesthood mm -hmm. and we're celebrating our faith and our church. Mm -hmm. it hap I happen to be the vessel, mm -hmm. but I could think if anyone was there, it would have been. Like, obviously, my family and friends were there, but the whole parish came out to support, mm -hmm. which was just an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And then the ceremony was beautiful. Um, celebration afterwards was, mm -hmm. was great fun and seeing everyone coming mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all my worlds kind of colliding with school mm -hmm. friends, seminary friends and all that. But I remember just being so happy. Again, so peaceful and grace-filled. And because I had a fear of waking up the next morning after the ordination and going, what have I done? Mm -hmm. But it never happened. And it's never happened. Mm -hmm. you know, it's always been Pretty so, yeah, so powerful, yeah. Your life as a young priest, your life as a young person, what hope do you have for the church in Ireland in these really turbulent and difficult yeah. times when it's really hard to be Catholic? Yeah. I think the word hope has been huge for me, mm -hmm. that the church is a beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. um, because working in Paris, you see a lot of people who don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. like, and that's why, that, that's their poverty. Mm -hmm. They may be the richest people in the parish, mm -hmm. but they don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. They don't have any um, light. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what Christ is, and that's what the church is. Mm -hmm. And to hopefully enable people to see that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've come through a very difficult time. We're still coming through that time, I think. But, but like we still have a lot to say mm -hmm. and a lot to give and a lot to do and and we all need hope and we all need hope yeah. if we don't have hope mm -hmm. who are we mm -hmm. um you know 
and the church can be hope. Mm -hmm. And maybe just finally, Father David, what would you say to a young person out there who might be watching this? Having heard your story of how God works in extraordinary ways and in very ordinary yeah. ways, in ways that are very natural for our journey, our yeah. specific journey, what advice would you give them in terms of giving that yes to the Lord? Um, just do it. Mm -hmm. If in any way you might feel called, mm -hmm. explore it. Mm -hmm. Go see a vocations director, um, go see a priest, mm -hmm. talk to someone. Will that be a priest or a trusted friend? Mm -hmm. um, if you have a spiritual director, mm -hmm. that's the perfect place to talk. But just give it a go. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid. Jesus mm -hmm. is telling us, do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my second reading I picked up my, uh, my first Mass, was Jesus telling Peter, do not be afraid. Do not know it's me. You know, mm -hmm. trust in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Allow his call for you. Mm -hmm. Allow that be hope. Allow that be good. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work out, know that that's what God wanted you at that time anyway. Mm -hmm. And to use that. Mm -hmm. but, but just give it a go. So thank you so much, Father David, on behalf of Shalom World TV and to all of our viewers for sharing so honestly and so beautifully of your story and the deep yes and faith that you gave the Lord all those years ago in Lourdes and how you're continuing to do that and give that yes as one of his priests. So thank you so much, Father Thank you David. very much, Maura. Thank, thank you. you. My hope and pray is that you will listen to God's call in your life, that you will feel inspired by God's call, that you will go to live the best life that God wants you to live. And for that, please God, you'll be truly happy. We pray that those who may hear the call of God to come and follow me may respond to that call with courage and with strong faith. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of Mass, we are told to go out and bring the Gospel into our lives and witness to the Gospel by everything that we say and do. It's so important that we are all out there bringing the joy of the Gospel to everyone we know. And that's why I'm so pleased to endorse and offer my blessing to Shalom World TV for all that you are doing to bring good news into this world which is often sad and dark and in need of a message of hope. Thank you for what you're doing. May God bless your work always.